Hey, MVPs, Rico Knows here. Going to talk to you guys about Ohio State. You guys see it here. We're doing win totals, futures bets for next season. Don't let the transfer portal fool you. Don't let anybody fool you when they're talking to the media. Ohio State is probably one of the best teams in America, definitely in the playoffs. I would say they're the favorite to win the Big Ten, top to bottom. Their rosters are loaded. The talent is there. Don't believe any of the headlines that say they're struggling in any way, shape, or form. I just don't see it. Just like last season, number one in my preseason poll was Michigan. And I said, I think they're going to win the national title. What do you know? They won the national title. But if you go find that original video of me in my preseason top 25, it was all Michigan. Now, that being said, I look at this team right here, and it's all Ohio State. And th there's just nobody more poised to win next year. Uh, there are other quality teams. Shout out to Texas and Georgia. But when I look at Ohio State, there's there's like no glaring issue whatsoever. They look deep enough to win 16 games, which is what they're probably going to have to win if you win the playoffs, okay? So I want you to think about that. 12 in the regular season, your conference title game, that's 13. Then you get to the playoffs, 14, 15, and 16. First round, second round, and the championship. They look like they have that kind of depth like a full NFL season, okay? They've really dominated the transfer portal, getting some of the best players out there. But let's talk about it because they do have a, a loaded schedule next season. They open up with Akron, okay? They open up with Western Michigan. They get two weeks to prepare for Marshall. At what point are they going to struggle? At what point are we worried? Iowa's defense is great. Their offense cannot score, so it's not even worth talking about. Going at Oregon is, is problematic. But even if they were to lose that game in a showdown, and I don't see it happening, uh, I don't see them losing any other games. Nebraska, Penn State, terrible. Purdue, Northwestern, Indiana, and then Michigan here. I, I'm have you seen Michigan? Have you seen them in the spring game? Alex Orgy, every pass was way off. Looked terrible, bro. Looked absolutely disgusting. Sat down and watched the entire Michigan uh, spring game. Was not impressed. I don't like where Michigan's headed next year. I feel like there's going to be an immense drop-off when you lose that many NFL-caliber players when you when you just don't have it, okay? Um, Ohio State, on the other hand, if they tell you they don't have a quarterback, I saw this all over the place. They haven't figured out who's going to be the starting quarterback in Chip Kelly's offense, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's talk about Chip Kelly's offense. It is called an inside zone run offense. It's Think of it as dual-threat quarterbacks, which is fine. You've all, you can you guys remember all the great Marcus Mariotas and whatnot, even Dennis Dixon. What you got to know is zone blocking is a real thing for Chip Kelly. Meaning, how do I explain this? Offensive linemen will block whoever's in front of them. And if they don't have anyone in their gap responsibility or heads up on them, they will double team until they get to the next level. And the runners just got to find that little gap. And then sometimes they'll do a play action and the quarterback will find those gaps. But the, the primary runner here is the running backs. And they have two of the best running backs in America, two of the top five, two of the top ten, whatever you want to call it. Quinshawn Judkins was my number one running back last year, talent-wise, production out, outside of that, right? Talent-wise, if we had tryouts tomorrow and we didn't know who anybody was and we just said, hey, yo, let's see all these guys try out, you're going to pick that guy to be on your team and to be your starting running back. I know some of you guys will be like, no, I pick Ollie Gordon. All right, sure, buddy. I'm just telling you, Quintron Judkins is him, and he's going to be splitting time with Henderson. So when I look at this team, I, I'm telling you, I see no glaring issues anywhere. Just stud after stud after stud, and it's deep, guys. It, no ditty. So I'm watching the spring game. And I'm watching them practice, and I'm watching everything. And you see all these receivers. But I want to talk about something, okay? Yes, all eyes are on Jeremiah Smith. Nah, dude. You see this running, this wide receiver down here, Bryson Rogers. Bryson Rogers, redshirt freshman, was actually in the transfer portal earlier this year. So that made me want to go find all the tape on this kid. It's fucking, he's great. And he had a great spring. And he's probably the fifth best wide receiver. The fifth best wide receiver on the team right now, which is really good news because that means he's going to get on the field. This guy could start anywhere. All the guys in front of him could start anywhere. They are amazing at wide receiver, okay? Amazing on the offensive line. I see Seth McLaughlin here, the transfer from Alabama. Everybody's like, well, he sucks. He couldn't get a snap off, all this stuff. Bro, are you kidding me? He started at Alabama. He gave up one sack in the SEC. If he sucks so bad... 
how is he starting at Alabama? There's people on the bench that should be playing then, right? No, he's better than all of them too. That's the, one of the best centers, if not the best center in the transfer portal, and he's at Ohio State starting, no big deal. Kamara leaves a lot to be desired, but they just need a blocking tight end. They don't care. And then Will Howard, oh, by the way, he's coming over from Ohio. Uh, and then Will Howard. What does Will Howard do well? Well, go watch his tape, man. He broke for like 70 yards on a run in front of our face. Shout out to all the MVPs. We actually bet against him one week. We're watching him, and he just goes out there and breaks for 80 yards. The man can run. He's like a, like a Daniel Jones type runner. Yeah, Vanilla Vic, that's that's who Will Howard is. I, I'm not excited about anybody else. Oh, and if they tell you there's still a quarterback battle and they haven't decided who's going to be the starter, it's the same smoke and mirrors as last year. They know who the starter is. They know who they want to start. They just don't want to announce it so other people don't jump in the portal. They don't want to lose Devin Brown. They don't want to lose their depth. So they just keep saying it's an open competition, and they'll name the starter a week before the season, but the coaches know. The coaches know who they're starting. Running backs are all great. Don't sweat it. They lost three, four guys in the portal. Not a big deal. Defensive line. Another thing that's pretty cool here is they actually have a nose tackle and a defensive tackle. Their defensive tackle is in the three technique over the guard, the gap between the guard and the um, and the tackle. Uh, if you don't know your gaps, one, three, five, whatever, right? But the three technique is kind of like at a slant or whatever. I want you guys to know this. When I saw Williams, and Williams is a stud. Williams is an NFL player. But when I saw him come out uh, and take a break, they brought in this other kid. And I want to talk. Well, who was it? Is it Taiwan? Jason Moore. It's Jason Moore. It's got to be Jason Moore. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jason Moore, Richard Freshman. Okay. So check this out. Jason Moore comes off the bench, goes in. Nobody talked about him last year. He went to the same high school as Chase Young. This kid moved from defensive end to defensive tackle. So it's a position change, and then he gains like all kinds of weight. He's now he's like 6'6", 300 pounds. Bro, I see a guy on edge with speed move to defensive tackle. He looks like Aaron Donald, bro. He looks like a guy that, I, I don't know, he's an NFL monster, and I'm telling you it's a problem. When I start seeing like Taiwan here, Taiwan Malone is a transfer from Ole Miss. When I start seeing dudes like this third string, Bro, the depth on this defensive line is a problem. They, the fact that they were able to talk Jack Sawyer to come back, they were Denzel Burke to come back, Igman Oson's still here, Caleb Downs just transferred in. Like, when you start seeing these guys, these are NFL guys. They, if they were in the draft right now, they'd all be drafted before the fifth round. Like, they're just so good. Guys, I, I don't know how to describe it to you. It, well, if they're so good, Rico, why didn't they win? Well, because Michigan had an all-time great team last year. That's it. Michigan had an all-time great team, and then they all packed it in for the bowl game. This is a great team. I don't see Ohio State losing. Um, if you got them losing to Oregon, more power to you. Oregon on the road. It's possible. But they have to lose two games to, to lose the bet here. Um, it's 10 and a half. Yeah, there's 12 games. Ten and a half. Yeah, I'm on the over, bro. I'm on the over. They're not losing to Michigan, not losing to India. No, they're not losing to none of these teams. Penn State's not there. Drew, Drew Aller can't throw on these guys. Nah. Nope. You can't run on them. Their defense is great. The only thing people are worried about is a new offensive scheme with a new quarterback, and they don't have – shut up, bro. They got wide receivers taking to the house on any screen play. I believe in Chip Kelly as an offensive coordinator. I believe in Chip Kelly wholeheartedly. Okay, they they just they look ready. Ohio State for me is going undefeated. Say what you want. I'm on the over on this. If I pull up the chart, if you guys don't know the futures chart is here, I won't drag it out too long. I don't need to be talking all day about every single player's journey. I'm just going to tell you Ohio State looks like 10 and a half. That thing should say 11 and a half and we should sweat one loss. But 10 and a half, shit. At minus 150, it's better odds than some of these others. Yeah, that's three units in a lock. I believe in Ohio State this year. If they let me down, I'd be I'd be very surprised. I don't I don't see it. Your friends don't know. But Rico knows. Good luck, y'all.